excuse me, Victoria. Yes. I'm Ryan Huntley. Michael Davis introduced us a couple of years ago at an art auction at Sotheby's. You outbid me on a spectacular Kandinsky. I remember. You cost me a fortune. Forgive me for being indelicate, but your husband asked to retain me as his divorce attorney. And you just happened to run into me here. For reasons of my own, I declined his offer. But believe me when I say I'd, I'd love nothing more than to represent you against your husband. I'll give it some thought. Please do. Hey, Ma. Daniel, I'm so glad you could come. I was very happy to get your call, Victoria. I'm very aware of the job you did for Michael in his divorce against Lydia. And I think it would be foolish of me not to consider your counsel. Thank you. Seems my reputation precedes me. I saw Michael earlier this summer, already with a pretty young woman in his arm. I trust he's doing well. Engaged. God help him. Obviously, his heart is faring a little better than Lydia's. Couldn't help but feel badly when I heard that she had jumped from her balcony. Well, you reap what you sow. Well, before we discuss my fee, I'll need you to agree to some non-negotiable conditions. I see. First condition, no contact whatsoever with your spouse starting now. That won't be a problem. <laughs> Second, I need absolute financial transparency from you. Bank accounts, lock boxes, planes, houses, jewelry. There's no need for the dramatic pauses, Mr. Huntley. If I disagree with your terms, I'll let you know. Finally, and most importantly, I need you to be willing to do whatever it takes to win your case, which could mean you end up with a significant amount of Conrad's blood on your hands by the time this is over. I wouldn't have it any other way. First on the docket is the triplex on Fifth Avenue. Conrad can have it. Oh, you just spent half a million redecorating it. The chalet in Aspen. I despise the cold. The house on Fisher Island. Uh, rather than wasting more time here, let me make this simple. My client is willing to give up her rights to every piece of property, except Grayson Matt. Because your client knows that this property is worth more than all the other properties combined. And as for the art, all she's asking for is the Renoir, the Pollock, and the Henry Moores. And the Kandinsky. Well, what about the de Kooning I bought you for your 40th, the one you said you couldn't live without? Well, like so many things, it hasn't aged well. Against my advice, Miss Grayson is being more than fair here. In addition to her share of the finances, all she's asking for is one house, a few pieces of art, and, of course, Charlotte. Mr. Grayson is seeking sole custody. That's out of the question. Charlotte came to live with me of her own volition. I'm just trying to honor that choice. The only thing you've ever honored is your own ego. You've been on a campaign to alienate her from me for years. Charlotte needed no provocation. Victoria was recently caught on camera confessing that she'd wished our daughter had never been born. You're reprehensible. Why don't we table this for now? I concur. I took the liberty of glancing through the prenup that Victoria signed back in 86. We'll be using this as the basis for any financial discussions going forward. Actually, Barbara, we won't. See, Victoria was pregnant when she signed the prenup, which by any court's definition would qualify as duress. Therefore, she's entitled to a full 50% of all assets accrued during the marriage. Duress? Marrying me was the best thing that ever happened to that woman. We'll see you in mediation. It's not surprising that after this initial meeting, Conrad has no intention of simply handing over what we're asking for. I think you should be prepared for this to proceed to trial. No, we'll handle this matter privately. Then you may want to consider what you're willing to give up to avoid that eventuality. <laughs> I've already given up far too much. Well, I'm afraid you can't have it both ways. If talks break down in mediation, our best chance of defeating Conrad will be to expose his infidelities in open court. This is a point you've made abundantly clear. There are other considerations. What? Charlotte, Daniel. It's exactly what opposing counsel is counting on. Your maternal instincts working against your self-interest. You're playing right into their hands. There's more than one way to lose a child in a divorce. 
You're not going to lose anything. I happen to be quite good at what I do, Victoria, but I can't do anything unless you start trusting me. You said you were willing to get your hands dirty while well, that time is fast approaching. My hands are already dirty. That prenup I signed before we were married, I lied. I wasn't really pregnant when I signed it. The contract is valid. And as far as Conrad knows? I miscarried at 10 weeks. That's exactly the kinds of secrets you agreed not to keep from me. I'll call you later in the day. I want to know why you dropped my father's appeal. I'm sorry, Miss Clark. That's privileged information. Not anymore. I don't know if you heard, but my father was murdered in prison. And as far as I'm concerned, you're just as guilty as the man who stabbed him to death. What is that? Every bit of evidence you could have used to prove his innocence. They got to you, didn't they? Victoria. I shudder to think what you charge for a late night house call. Trust me, this is one bill you should be delighted to pay. I found a doctor who's willing to manufacture the documents necessary to prove you had that miscarriage. In the eyes of the law, Conrad's prenup with you is null and void. And nothing else matters. Well, you'll be happy to hear that your prenup is well on its way to being nullified due to duress. Thank you, Ryan, for going above and beyond on that one. Where do we stand with Charlotte? Well, at this time, there's no compelling legal argument to force her back home with you. But believe me, I'll continue to dig. Right now, my main concern is your interest in Grayson Global. Seems Conrad is seeking to divest you of your stock in the company. Is he insane? Someone needs to remind that man that I earned every single one of those shares. And without me, he's not insane. A strong army. But before we go into the ring with them on this, I think it'd be wise if we set up a little insurance policy. We need Conrad to restore Daniel's access to his grandfather's trust. You're asking me to involve my son in this? Well, by his own declaration, he's already involved. And he's on your side. Combine Daniel's shares with yours. And we control the company. Right. Unfortunately, we can't simply ask Conrad to release Daniel's stake in the firm to him. He'd put together the pieces immediately. But we're not going to ask. Daniel is. Then it becomes a simple question of loyalty. Conrad's to Daniel, and Daniel's to you. We should have seen a counter move like this coming. Conrad is many things. Paranoid, first among them. The new conditions on Daniel's trust don't mean we have to change our strategy. You said Daniel broached the subject of marrying Emily. Give me your blessing. Take control of the company. The company is far less important to me than my son. You said this was going to be an insurance policy. I'm trying to protect your future. And I'm protecting my son's. I will not have him rushing into a marriage with a woman I don't even trust. Sounds like he's already made up his mind. You stand in his way, you risk losing the alliance you built. Conrad only stipulated marriage, not a successful one. Your son wants to rush into this. Let him. Conrad's got a half dozen offshore entities holding multi-currency bank accounts in Denmark and Spain. You got a ballpark? 500 million, give or take. When were they established? Within the last 10 years. Making them community property now that we've voided the prenup. And there's something else he's withholding. The SEC's sniffing around looking at the company's trading practices. So there's a bit of a ticking clock to get whatever liquid assets we can before a potential scandal blows up. I told you Daniel will come through. Should make today's mediation session all the more interesting. Victoria? Well, it looks like your father's deceit is good news for both of us. How so? Because thanks to you, I'm poised to get what's rightfully mine, and you won't have to go through your impetuous plan to marry Emily. Mom. 
Let's get right to this, shall we? There have been some rather interesting discoveries in our research into Mr. Grayson's finances. There have also been some interesting discoveries about your client's past indiscretions. Any infidelities my client may have participated in from a legal standpoint was voided by your client's affair with Ms. Davis. I'm afraid we're talking about a much more serious breach of trust here, Ryan. You've breached our disclosure contract, Victoria. And not for the first time. How do you expect me to represent you when I can't even trust you? I told you I had an affair. Well, you didn't tell me it was with David Clark or that Charlotte could possibly be his daughter. What are you doing? Well, our late head of security had a number of subcontractors he hired for various tasks. Looks like I'm going to be needing one of them. For what? Mason thinks that his tapes were destroyed in a fire, but I know damn well it was deliberately set in order to cover the theft. By whom? Ashley, please invite Amanda Clark up this afternoon for tea. Do not take no for an answer. Sit down. I don't take orders from you. Ryan. OK, I got to go now. Yep. A spoon. I'll have the lab rush this right through. There's no way that girl is David Clark's daughter. Well, we'll know soon enough. Victoria, I just got off the phone with Conrad's lawyer. The preliminary results from Charlotte's DNA test are in. He's not the father. Despite the DNA results, Mr. Grayson has no intention of voiding Charlotte's trust fund. How oh, very generous of you. She's not to blame, after all. She does realize that means we're done with the idea of mediation. You really want a protracted trial? You know, you'll both be skewered in the media. No, somehow I think it's my soon-to-be ex-wife who's going to draw the most unflattering spotlight. I need to speak with her in private. That might not uh, be the no, best. I would advise I against that. It's not a request. This late an hour, you must be bearing bad news. It depends. The lab compared Amanda's DNA samples to Charlotte's. And? They're a match. They're definitely half-sisters. That means she really is Amanda Clark. I don't believe it. There is something more serious I need to discuss with you, Victoria, about my services and your legal affairs. Allow me to help you, Mr. Huntley. You're fired. I told you Jack Porter was off limits. What happened? Victoria called in her own guy. There was nothing I could do. You were supposed to control it. They got to you, didn't they? No. Your father did. I told him his best shot at a new trial would mean pulling you in. He refused. He was afraid of what the conspiracy might do to keep you silenced. You're lucky I intercepted that DNA test you ordered on Amanda. If I hadn't switched the sample, you'd be finished. I know. Thank you. You know I believe your father is innocent. But I can't be part of this kind of violence. Maybe it's time you reassess what you're doing here. 